Hey guys, thank you for joining us today. We're, we've had a great, great. Hey guys, thanks for joining us today here at Lip and Lure. <laughs> what is your deal? What is wrong with this guy? <laughs> I might as well take a drink. I ain't gonna get the composure. I'm crying. I expect to see this in the blooper reel. Yep. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Lip and Lure. My name is Gunner. This is CJ. And welcome to the video for today. What we have planned is something a little bit different on this one. It's something that, you know, we've talked about doing. We haven't necessarily saved it for doing a video, but it just so happens today that's my idea. And we want to talk a little bit about, you know, finds. When you're out fishing, you we find lures. Some are in immaculate condition. Others are worse for wear. This one, for example. This one was... Uh, give him a close-up of that, because that's... That one was beat badly i'm not sure what happened what this guy caught or missed to for him to do this to an expensive lure at that and i, I don't know what brand it is right necessarily but it is beyond belief right and this one's basically we pulled it and we're going to use it for parts right we were going to try and fix it at one point but then we realized how badly damaged it was and decided it was not worth saving yeah the action in that would be ruined i mean the most i think we could get away with this one for example is just taking the lip off of it and maybe i don't even think taking the lip off would work because it's it's I, one piece it's got a hook we can use yeah <laughs> i actually pulled the um the feather treble and put it on the top water popper that, that is made. true yeah i used that on another bait but for example like we found other ones like this one this one doesn't need to be repainted. This one here, we can just keep throwing. And it's I a believe nice it's a... It's a Rapala. It is a Rapala. It's a 7 to 8 foot diver. Yeah. And it's probably a 10 or $12 bait. Yeah. Free is the best kind of price. <laughs> but this poor guy here was found on a bank when the lake was pretty low. It was tar up. I think it was up in some brush, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was Fellows Lake, too. Yeah, it was Fellows Lake. And it's a local lake to us. And this guy's pretty beat up. And so the plan that I have for today's video is to restore this. Take the paint off of it. Pull the hardware. I don't plan on putting any hardware back on it. But I do plan on refinishing it today. That's what I'm going to do for this video for you guys. And kind of show you the process that I do um, with restoring. And so it's kind of a journey... For all of us because this is the first time i'll be doing this on a pre-made bait um so we're gonna have fun with it we're gonna see what we can make happen today this was another find as well it was a dirty dingy nasty one yeah i've got some plans for this one myself i'm gonna clean this up one not this video but it, it, we'll eventually use it for something mm -hmm. it also gives us a good idea of what we can and can't do with our custom baits like the right. split backs and stuff like that and I think on that one you took, yeah, the lip's already been taken off that one yeah, we've been reusing. We'll have to make a new lip for it, but that's a video for another time. But let's go ahead and jump down in on this. Um, actually, before I start doing that, we do want to plug in here that, you know, this is a uh, service that we will offer uh, to people that are looking to get a bait restored um, either or repainted or anything of that nature. Or that's if you just want to send us baits, we're going to set up a P.O. box eventually. You right. can send us old junk baits that you find. You can send us old baits that you don't use anymore, baits yep. you find, and you can see what we can do with them. Yep. Uh, yeah, and again, that's something that we're going to offer to you guys. But let's go ahead and jump down in on this. I'm going to move the camera and so that you guys get a better angle on what I'm going to be doing today. So I'm going to go ahead, and the first thing I'm going to do with this is find my pliers. There they are. I'm going to rip out and away, and I'm going to go ahead and remove the hardware off of this today. I'm going to try to salvage as much as I can, but honestly, these split rings are probably toast. Probably not reusable, so yeah, they're very soft. We're just gonna go ahead and ditch these. We'll just put our own hardware back on. But the idea for today that I'm having so far is to hopefully, I think I'm gonna take a journal to it. I haven't really decided quite yet what I'm gonna do. But oh, I think I wanted to point it out. I don't know what this guy was doing. Maybe you guys can tell me in the comments below. But there is, I don't know if you can see that. It might have been a trailer. But there is a some kind of custom twisted wire. On, attached to this. Tell me down in the comments what you think that might have been used for because me personally it might have been a trailer but I really have no clue as to what this gentleman was doing or woman may have been doing with this bait. And I'm going to try to without hooking myself. Hmm, that might not be a possibility. I might have to just trash this hook altogether. But I'm going to do my best to not have that be a thing. Okay. There we go. 
There we go. See, not always the simplest with split rings because they like to fight you. And I don't, at the moment, have a proper set of split ring pliers. But, that's what we do around here is we make do with what we have. So, anyhow, simple as that. Got this hardware taken off. Now, I'm going to go ahead. Um, yeah, I'll leave that guy on there. I think I can make that work. Uh, a second thought, let me pull it off. For the fact that with that being on there, it may cause some issue with painting and things like that. All right, got the hair, the hardware taken off. Ooh, I need to get this eyeball out of here. Let me grab, grab our trusted razor blade here. And let's try to pop this guy out. Oh, that was simple. Looks like they use the same thing as everybody else does out on the market, just a simple stick on. All right, let's go ahead and get the Dremel out for this one and we will start removing some of this paint off here. Hmm, there might be a better method to this. But let me keep going with it. All I'm using is just a simple wire brush on the Dremel here. I'm thinking it's gonna do the best job of evenly taking all this off here. Slow it down a little bit so I'm not removing so much material. You know what? This isn't working as well as I thought I was going to. We're going to try another method here. What I'm thinking I'm going to try to do is actually take some of the sandpaper that is meant for a belt sander. And I'm moving down to a finer grit to pull most of this off here. It's not working at all. It's just it's pulling more material than anything. All I'm looking to do. Oh, that works well. Yeah. Well, with this, I went and switched up from the Dremel not being so good for taking off you know mass amounts of the paint and the finish work that was previously on here going over to this 120 grit again with this belt sanding paper i've uh, got a good portion of that off there what i'm going to do i'm just trying to get most of the nasty stuff that's kind of built up from the lake water getting underneath the paint i'm going to come back over this in some of these detail spots with this dremel uh, real quick and knock out uh, the rest of this dirt and stuff that's on here all right i'm going to get some white and let it up in this gun get it ready to go and start base coating. You do not need to be painted. It helps quite a bit when you're not painting those things. Especially when I use it later. But again, just gonna go over this with a nice white base coat. Put it on there nice and heavy. That way we don't have to worry about any of the other colors coming through. That might have been left over from me stripping it. All right, now give it a second coat of white just so it's that much better. Make sure everything that we put on on top of this will be a much clearer and pronounced color when we go ahead and put them on here. This one I'm going to go with a more traditional kind of coloration on this. I'm looking at doing a purple ridge with a chartreuse belly and a shad dot with some pearl white for the most of the body here. Right, gotta make sure because of that pearl white, I got a really good base coat for this white here. And now I'm gonna work on the pearlized white. That's gonna be the base coat for the body of this one. It's gonna be everything from the belly all the way up to this ridge line. You gonna get some shadow you see here, basically. Exactly what I'm going for. Pretty common bait fish that you're gonna see here in the Missouri area. Again, I'm just going to go over this a couple of times with this pearl white. I'm going to kind of go through this pretty quickly and speed it up for you so you guys don't have to keep watching me over and over and over with this pearl white because I want to get a good base coat of this on here. All right, guys, so I re-angled the camera here so you're going to be able to see exactly what I'm doing. I'm even tilting the bait so that when I'm doing this paint job for the gizzard shad, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Uh, I've got the purple loaded up in here. It's the pearlized purple. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shoot this down the ridge line. And I'm going to try to get it to where you guys can see exactly what I'm doing here. So I'm not going to go real heavy on the coats. I'm just going to kind of get it to where I want it. I'm going to stop, heat set it, and we'll go over it a few more times. Right. Go ahead. 
ahead and give this a little bit more. And then I'm going to heat set it one more time. Go ahead and give this one final coat purple, not only because it probably needs it, but I've got a little bit left here in the gun. I think that turned out pretty good for what I'm looking to do with this one. A little bit of that overspray gives it a little bit of that more natural effect. Now, let's go ahead and let's do the chartreuse belly. That one I'm going to have to reposition the bait. But not a whole lot. Then at the end, we'll add those shad dots, like your traditional shad, and they'll be finished up. And then we're on the clear coat. Now <laughs> that I've heat set the purple on here, I'm going to throw the chartreuse at it. Why don't you use the epic hands? Hmm? Uh, because it's with the way this one has line sets, line hooks on it, uh, it's very hard to get it to sit on the helping hand. So it's just easier to throw the chartreuse at the belly of this by hand. Plus this way, I just have more control over what's going on. Give that one more spray with a chartreuse here. And that should finish off the belly. All right, so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and find my stencil that I have created for doing the shad dots. I have it in a bag here. Here it is, I found it. This is the bag. So we've got multiple bags set up. We need to get the markers out and mark them. But we learn as we go. And you're gonna learn right along with us. So that's a big part of it. We need to mark out what bags are which. So this is the shad dot. I'm gonna go ahead and place it probably about midway to closer to the front of the head is my plan for this. And I'm gonna try to line it up as best I can and match it on both sides. But what I'm first gonna do here, get a little bit of this paint out of here and I'm gonna go ahead and get the black and we will get these shad dots in here. All right, guys. So now that I've got this mounted back up here, and go ahead, go ahead and get the shad dot onto this bait. Now I'm just going to lightly spray this on here, and I may even have to tip this over just a little bit more, so that I'm going to try to get this to where you guys can see it right along with me. And I'm just going to line it up. I'm going to bring the bottom of that black. No, actually, I'm bring the bottom of that black to the bottom of that gill. And right about where that purple starts is what I'm going to do. And just line it up to the back of the gill here. There we go. And that is the shadow dot. And what I'm also going to do, since I have it over here, is I'm going to go ahead and put a little touch of black right behind the eye. It gives it that little bit of a shadowed effect when you put those eyes on. It looks really nice. Another great tip for when you are using stencils, when you paint on them, take them, rub that paint off, so you don't transfer that onto the bait. Now, again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna bring it here. I'm gonna kinda of line it up with the bottom of that gill plate where the bottom of this line is. I'm gonna take this, and I'm just gonna lightly go over it with the black a couple of times. Get that nice shadow dot on there. Now, they won't always come out 100% lined up with each other, but you do the best that you can, and it usually works out pretty good. Again, I'm gonna get that little bit of black behind the eye. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get some eyes on this. Let's see what's going to work out best for this one. Got some yellow. Maybe. Got some nice blue ones in here as well. Let's we'll kind of see what's going to really line up and pull this bait together. It might even just be something as simple as this silver white. You just never know. Well, it looks like those eyes are going to be too big. So no white eyes, at least from this pack, are going to be going on to here. I'll take just a moment. I'm going to flip through this. Red. Ooh, we're going to get our partner CJ's idea on this one. What? A red? 
I went through the blue. I went through the gold. I thought maybe the silver. silver. I tried the silver. Silver's too big. Oh, too big. Yeah. Um, I would go with the blue Actually, and the gold. Actually, these silvers might yeah. work. They're a little bit smaller. I did like the way the silver looked. Just silvers little. are always better for uh, shads. That's what I figured myself. It's going to give it a bit of a shimmer. We're also going to be a little bit different because I might have to go back over this. A little bit of a pearl white. See, this is what I was talking about when you wipe the paint off. It might even be. Actually, that's a fuzz of overspray. That's what that is. Yep. So, I'm going to come back in with a little bit of the silver white and touch that up. Go ahead and put this eye on here just so that's touched up. All right, guys. So, now that I've got the gun cleaned out and I've got some pearl white thrown back into here, what I'm going to go ahead and do So we all make an oops every once in a while. I'm going to come back in and just lightly recover that black with this pearl white. And you know what? I might even keep just that little bit of a faded effect that it's giving it because it's a little unique and kind of like it. All right, so you can see here a little bit, you see with the light, you see right here where it kind of turns a little gray in between that uh, pearl white there. I'm going to leave that. All right, now, so you see this where I put that pearl white back over. It's a little bit darker from the rest of the body. I like that difference. I'm going to go ahead and leave that instead of trying to coat it, coat it multiple times. But after talking with CJ here at Lip and Lure, he gave me an idea to throw a little bit of a red on this gill plate, and so I'm going to do exactly that. I like that idea, so I'm going to throw it at it. And it's just right here where this natural gill plate's already built in. And I'm just going to lightly, and I mean lightly, put a red line right behind this. really like the way that turned out. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. And watching out for that overspray. Line this stencil up as best I can. And I'm just going to lightly come over behind that gill plate and put a little bit of this red on here. Very subtle, but just enough to give it that lifelike feature. Hey guys, thanks for joining us here at Lip and Lure today and following along with this project, restoring this bait. It's been a lot of fun for me. I've been grateful for the input that CJ's given today. Um, honestly, I think this turned out really well. It's my take on a gizzard shad. Uh, it's not your typical where you're going to have the body line down. It. This is exactly what I would want to throw. Now, this isn't something that everybody would want, but again, thank you for joining me today on this venture. <laughs> And, and putting this together here. If you guys really liked what we had going on today with this video, you enjoyed the content, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment below and let us know what you guys think. And don't forget to hit the notification bell, it helps. Right, it helps us to spread out to others. Don't forget We're, to hit that uh, Instagram page. Yeah, and Facebook. also the Facebook. We're going to have those linked down below for you guys so you guys can see all the other work that we have going on. Not everything's going to be put up on our YouTube channel. We are selling these baits. We are providing them to the public. So message us either here through our email or you can hit us up again on the Instagram or the Facebook and get we in will, contact with us. We will be going live on Facebook from time to time as well. Right. You can catch You'll us actually there. see us doing this as we're doing it. Right. And you can kind of, you know, talk with us one-on-one, -on -one, what we're doing, throw your questions at us. Well, why would you do that or why would you do this? We welcome you guys to come join us. We're just regular people. We can barely keep a straight face half the time. But yes. then again, thanks for joining us. Have a good one.